I'm fine with it. All right, well, since no one's objected, I have pressed the button. Hi, okay, I will do the intro. Hi, welcome to GURPS Wars, a homebrew GURPS Star Wars campaign, and we are back from a extended one-shot arc where the PCs in that one actually did not die, so that was good. And now everybody has to get back into character. Therefore, people should be bantering because that seemed to work wonderfully with, you know, the one shot. Um, I do not banter. Concerning. Huh? Uh, actually, no, I, I have to disagree. You do banter. You have bantered a lot with me. Every time you've told me, Rotini, don't turn the ship engine into a nuke. Rotini, do not wear the spacesuit and go to the airlock with a handful of explosives mm -hmm. to detonate the space pirates. When we have that back and forth, that's technically banter. I disagree. I am See? applying common sense. And the banter continues. <laughs> I am totally making hand gestures as I'm doing this. <laughs> We should probably talk about what happened last Obviously. time because yes, we, it's we had been a like while for seven or eight Halloween episodes. <laughs> <sighs> you could have had more if you'd actually talked to the NPCs in the Halloween episode, but no, no one. Well, no, and took to talk to the NPCs. We saved the living people. We cared about the would... NPCs extensively, darling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to my great and lifelong regret. <laughs> <laughs> I regret one of them was okay. to throw a bottle of vomit into the portal of Nope. I do not regret you not getting to throw a bottle of vomit into the portal of Nope. Look, they spent all their time the problem, screaming. The problem with it. you... The problem with you throwing a bottle of Nope into the... A bottle of vomit into the portal of nope is that the portal of nope came to meet us it might have thrown the bottle of vomit back and i don't trust it to be discriminating oh oh i don't like that i don't like that that's what telekinesis <laughs> other is for <laughs> what are so all uh, what's going on in this campaign <laughs> I was just about to say in Swalrock's voice, what are all of these people doing on our ship? <laughs> Rotini, which is, if you're going to stay, you got to pay a fee. Of course, we have everyone else on our ship, so why not <laughs> them too? They have to bunk with the very large cat that's taken over the port hold. Okay, I mean, one of, one of from the timing the of when of everything deck. happens, yeah. from Let's, the timing um, of when anything happens, they're all kids, so. <clears throat> yes, and one of them's a Jedi young one. Mm -hmm. It's very tragic. Uh, I'm trying so, to get the giant cat out of here so that I can actually see what it's, actually it's is here, on. but thanks. Okay, Flicker is now in space. It's fine. Frisky. 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 Space Cat, it's where it's at. I'll be keep that in mind. It's where they sat. Fits, sits, etc. Mm -hmm. So, what did happen last time with Zisha and company? Zisha, what do you remember happening last? Um, what did happen last? I daringly outflew uh, at least one, no, at least three pirate ships. <laughs> Uh, and then safely made it to hyperspace while we ferried our Imperial friends to, well, some probably less friendly Imperials. Code for this, fortunately. And that was the session Anyone where... else have th anything to add? That is the session mm -hmm. where I was stifled again and not allowed to throw explosives out the airlock. So instead, I was helpful by, you know, juicing the engines and things like that. Mm hmm And I helped by meditating. Weren't you frotzing up the other ship, too? I don't think so. <clears throat> the, the funny I think thing that is, what I was doing was meditating. 
the funny thing is you have a number of fatigue from your efforts from last session. So game mechanics wise, you meditated until you were too tired. <laughs> no, I meditated until I was half tired. That's one quarter as tired. Well, if you were too tired, this math is but you're five tired confusing now, me. It's actually double and a half again. Were you you were meditating to, in order to assist the piloting? I think was that it. Yes, I think I was rolling combat precognition. That right. right. Yes. We were all pretty much trying. You to were help forcing. <clears throat> uh huh. Zisha being the one with, you know, piloting the ship. Okay. It's my headphones here. So, you get jumped back to hyperspace and made a few more transits of places where you have to drop out of hyperspace, alter course slightly to stay in the hyperlane, get into the correct little hyperlane thing that you're... you're Jumping into next, etc. Your people continue to hang around and eat your rations or try not to eat too many of your rations. They're trying to be considerate here. After all, there's a Sith on board. You have to I, be considerate of Sith's rations. I, I disagree with the term rations. Zisha is very good at cooking. To refer to her for That's true. merely rations... <laughs> demeans the effort and quality. You are correct. Supplies. Foodstuffs. I say this while dabbing at the void that is my face with a napkin because I had seconds. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want anyone to see a mess around my face. Indeed. Understandable. One moment. I am being asked for a document. Which I think it will be a document. <laughs> And so this document. Okay. How long are we going to be in transit between the pirates and the Imperials? Probably another couple days. Okay. With a couple of drop-offs and whatnot. And I mean, you can always try to uh, <clears throat> make the trip a little bit shorter, you know, by trans transiting some of these things, cutting the hyperlanes real close. You know, that way you can make the Kessel Run and only a few more parsecs, that kind of thing. Right. The Kessel Run's all right. the way back okay. that way. We're not doing it. No, you shouldn't. You, you sh If you want to do the Kessel Run, you should have gone before we left. <clears throat> Your Imperial Ducklings, well, soldiers, would like it if you did not do the Kessel Run. I also would like it if we did not do the Kessel Run. I am not sure what the Kessel Run is. I... Would like to say that I don't know what the Kessel Run is, but I have the truthful disadvantage. And technically, Zisha and I are um, freelance capitalists, otherwise referred to as smugglers by those who demean us. So we probably do know what the Kessel Run is. Indeed. Alas. I'm going to argue that the canonical reason why I was able to spend points to increase my computer operations skill is because uh -huh. over these past two days, I have had to do tech support for all of the Imperials and possibly Rocky as well. It's been a while since Rocky saw... <laughs> like, data pads weren't the, what they were when Rocky went to bed. Um... <laughs> and it's the kind of tech support that one going home for the holidays might have to give one's parents. But nothing uh -huh. like doing something over and over and over again to teaching it over and over and over again to really improve one's skill in that particular field, which is why my computer operation is now 19. Reasonable. I imagine every now and then one of the ducklings holds up a data pad and just says, Utini to me, and I just sort of sigh heavily. Utini. <laughs> and I come over and I go tap, 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 and then their screensaver is off. <laughs> well, that's because you have Republic tech. They're used to Imperial tech. Oh, 
Of course, of course. I mean, they have their own imperial tech as well, some of them. So. Of course, they have their own inferior imperial tech. Uh, I'm not saying the Republican tech is better. They're both equally bad. Everyone should be running Space Linux. <coughs> but neither side is. I will leave it up to our listeners to decide which side is running Space <laughs> Mac OS and which side is running Space Windows. I'm not going to make that call. Bold of you to speak of whose technology is better when you don't have a force drive. I'm referring to the user interface. I mean, bold it's of you. It's very to... user unfriendly to not have force tech. Look, our drive takes our mass and accelerates it. If that's not force, that I slept through physics for nothing. <laughs> Not that kind of force. None of this is canon, presumably. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Please? <laughs> yeah, well. <clears throat> yes, well. I am happy to have it be canon if we want I was to be. doing out of character <laughs> banter in, in character. Her... Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, at the same time, you're getting into Zorak's head again, which is good. Yes. Yes. Over the next two days or thereabouts, is there anything that people want to be doing? <clears throat> I'm spending my usual hour a day studying hut, uh, uh, not Huttese, Jawaiis. Okay. Add those to your time use. Yep. I'm spending my time not saying anything and biting my tongue when I realize that the thing Zisha just learned about Jawa Ease is something that I've been doing incorrectly because that was a class I slept through. You were doing native speaker stuff. It's a regional dialect. It, obviously. Swilrock? Anything in particular? It would help if I was not muted. Yes. I don't remember how time use works. The Zwellrock is attending to the general existence of the ducklings and trying to keep Nedra from hijacking the ship and all of that good stuff. She does seem to sleepwalk rather a lot when not, like, drugged up or locked in her room or if you put her to sleep with mind tricks. She will sleepwalk over to the bridge and start trying to figure out how to get into it and uh, I'm assuming you're keeping it locked these days. Yes. And she keeps insisting that that you need to be at different coordinates can I, in her sleep. Can I set up a terminal hmm? in the port hold where huh. she's sleeping? Or they're sleeping, I, I forget which. Um, her. Is she her? Okay. Um, Yep. That is, it's not access to the flight controls, hmm. but it might be like a demo unit of the flight controls. Like, here, here you go. It's like when you see a car seat that has a steering wheel attached to it that the little baby can spin left and right as they're going down mm -hmm. the road. It's one of those. Let's see... I mean, yes, you, you can do that. How well you can, at least if the dice say so. Okay, am I rolling computer operation, I would call computer programming, electronics operation, electronics repair, or engineer? I think you're running engineer, and then we will use an electronics repair. Actually, do engineer, electronics repair, and computer programming to see which one okay. might have the worst I made engineer by 10. Made it by 10 on engineer. And uh -huh. the other two? The only reason... Gi um, give me an electronics repair to wire it up correctly. I made, made by, by 11. 11. Give me computer programming to get it loaded so that it's up and running and looks like the thing. I made, made by, by one. one. Okay. Th that's my weak area. That's your weak area. Programming is your weak area. You JavaScript. only have a 15. JavaScript is yeah, not a very robust it's... language. No, it's not. It's 
keeps trying to pass data that's encoded as you know scent molecules. I in my free time I've been trying to learn C four plus plus. C four plus 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 plus. Well, actually, it's a long time away. Be like okay, that C one plus. I was hoping that joke would blow up, but it was a dud. <laughs> I uh, I was about to say C four. <laughs> C4 is not a programming language. Details, well, not with details. that attitude. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if I put Computers that are power- computer programming, it will be. <laughs> mm-hmm. Concerning. Anyway, I was able and to Cisha do And is typing. Yep, okay. You're able to do that. It's in there now. Hopefully it will distract her slightly. One never knows. At least not till the next... But the thing is that that probably took you a little bit, and now you're bopping out of hyperspace, and there's, you know, you pop out of hyperspace. It looks like it's a system with a piddling little dwarf sun. There might be an asteroid ring around there somewhere. The last system. You're getting a calm challenge. Had what? An elf sun instead of the dwarf sun. No, I think it had an orc sun. Yeah, that tracks. Huh. Anyway, we're being hailed. You're not being hailed per se. You've got a... Something is sweeping across your ship that is trying to make a calm connection, but not like... You know, when you if you touch the thing that says... I assume you're going to touch the thing that, that lets it talk. It starts doing, you know, the modem connect hisses and whatnot. It's not doing an actual person. You do have a code for no, don't shoot. Can we use the code that says no, don't shoot? I assume you're going to, but I'm going to wait for the captain to say so. The captain was looking up rules. Uh, oh, well, yeah, that, that happens. I assume if something is trying is going to shoot at us and we can say no, don't shoot, then let's say no, don't shoot. Mm-hmm. Okay. In fact, you you get the the modem handshake for a little bit with your code going and their code goes. Yeah, you know, sounds a bit like droid speak, but really fast. And then you are in fact hailed by an actual human, an identified ship. Please state your alliance. Please state your allegiance. Uh, independent ship carrying Republic passengers. Uh, uh, Republic? No, carrying no. Imperial, Imperial passengers. Pass- <laughs> <laughs> Imperial passengers. <laughs> that was a player error. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can you? That, that was me going. Don't say Republic. Don't say Republic. Republic. <laughs> <laughs> That's a. That would be a crit fell on the fast. Oh walk. no. <laughs> Good news, you said it very fast. Bad news, it's what you said. <laughs> ah. Identities of the Imperial passengers. And can you get one on the bridge to vouch? Indeed, you probably actually have the commanding officer there. I think, yeah, I would try to have the commanding officer there. Oh, yeah. He's there. Uh, I don't actually know what your unit is called. <sighs> Tell him that Garm Regan is the <clears throat> commanding officer here. Lieutenant commander. I think. I, mean. uh, I have a Garm Regan lieutenant commander here. Uh, commanding officer to speak to whoever's in charge. One moment, I will run the ID codes. I will also get my... There they are. Sorry, I just had to... Hear. Actually, he's coming. Okay. Let me edit this so that I do not forget what rank I have given him. Again. Oh. <laughs> I was really just seen. looking for, like, battalion, squadron, strike team... He probably, he'll give you an ID code, a code number for it, you know, such and such grouping. Okay. So he's giving you his, his, you know, name, rank, and serial number. Um, 
ID number, whatever. So after a moment, ah, please come in to coordinates. Uh, do you use Imperial coordinates or Republic coordinates? I can do either. Good. Imperial coordinates 57 R 43 B. I will make these up. <laughs> Basically directing you to a point in space a bit more inside the uh, system. You can do a micro jump to hyperspace if you make sure that it is straight on those coordinates. Uh, Roger. We'll be there as soon as we can. Excellent. You may dock with the dreadnought when you get here. Acknowledged. Give me a piloting roll. <laughs> the comm connection closes. Give me a piloting roll. Made by one. You quite competently get to the location, quite possibly in a micro hyper jump. I mean, after all, it's several AU and gets boring, just sort of puttering around too slowly. Right. We Picard maneuvered over. There's... you, Yeah, something like that. There's a... very dark, rocky dwarf planet. No, not an elf planet. Not an orc planet. This one's a dwarf planet. You can hear the little diggy diggy hole from the sensors <laughs> if you listen hard enough. Or maybe that's just space madness. And on the other side of it is, in fact, an Imperial Dreadnought. Looking all like those giant triangular wedgie things. Because, hey. A fascinating ship. A standard Dreadnought, my lord. Says Lieutenant Commander Regan. It looks very large when one is standing on a freighter. True, my lord. Probably doesn't even have a force drive. Or sure. Sadly, it does not. You are contacted again, given instructions to dock. Just for grins, give me another piloting roll to make sure that you don't, like, crunch it, or and instead you fly casually enough. Made by four. You dock smoothly. There are a bunch of people... Okay, which airlock are you going to dock this sucker at? You've got a port airlock and a starboard airlock. Just for grins, tell me which one. Starboard. Starboard. That's airlock 14, airlock right? Occupied by long yes. Cap. Well, short cap. Smallest cap. One of the caps. There is a, <clears throat> a, a cap by volume is in the other airlock. You have not been asked to land in the thing. You've been asked to dock, so you're not taking up you know, hangar bay space. Sure. So, you open the airlock bit there and get a whole bunch of people waiting on the other end, including someone who actually looks like they are, what's the right word, uh, in charge. You might even have a captain for some reason. <laughs> All of the ducklings will, in fact, line up. Let's just move the ducklings, move the ducklings through the walls. Kool-Aid man. If there's anything we have learned from the other thing, it is that walls are nothing but trouble. <laughs> walls true. are optional. Oh, you You don't happen to have a med gurney handy, do you? Though we do have one injured member of the uh, huh. the should have, unit. Should have asked, yes. Uh, med droids. You get med droids who will, in fact, show up very quickly while the other people are going out. And uh, Lieutenant Commander Regan is report making a report etc everything is going on and after hearing the report and getting people out and getting all of your wounded out we'll get the wounded out just move everybody off the ship off the ship get off the ship zoom 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 wait no wrong airlock ah! after a bit 
<clears throat> yeah, well, you're there too. <laughs> not. Everyone. I said I, I, said I was not that's... going to wait by the airlock to wait. Bye bye. Bye now. Bye. Bye bye. Bye now. <laughs> Enjoy your vacation. Bye bye. It's a little rock is, in fact, lingering around to make sure the ducklings are safely transferred. Zisha, too? Yeah. After a moment, Lieutenant Commander Regan comes back, since you haven't, like, yanked away immediately, and comes over to where Zisha is at the uh, ship end of the airlock, basically. <sighs> Captain. Commander. The uh, captain of the Dreadnought, Captain Travas, is asking if you would be amenable to a business offer. Uh, I suppose that depends on the offer, but I'm happy to listen. Would you care to step onto the Dreadnought or... Would you be amenable to the captain coming aboard? I'll... Just a moment. My engineer's in another compartment. Of course. I'll wait here, sir. Don't you hate it when you leave your engineer in another compartment? Nods. I am going to go find Rotini. Rotini. Hey, uh, they're asking me aboard the Dreadnought to discuss business. Um, if I give the panic signal, just get out of here, okay? I'll find my way back. I give a begrudging Utini. All right. And uh, don't go where Nedra says to go. Don't need to tell me twice. Not even to blow it up. I do the whole, like, lean back and put my hand on my chest with my fingers extended. Like, you would accuse me of doing such a thing? <laughs> I don't think we've got that many. I would bullets. never. Not without a supply run first. <laughs> Anyway, okay. I'm gonna, I'm I'll gonna head go back, back in the cabin. The Swell Rock is going to follow unless they are asked not to follow. Following Seisha. Okay. Actually, strike the cabin. I'm going we to will... see Nedra's out. I'm just going to keep following Nedra around. Nedra is sort of curiously peering around at the airlock from far too close to the uh, doors to the bridge, honestly, for your sense of security. Well, you'll note my placement sort of prevents um, detours. It's true. She would trip over you. She has not been trying to get onto the bridge while she's awake. Where so is far. our droid? We've got PT and JR, who are canonically not here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Where did you leave your droid? I assume that your droid is in the charging storage room there where i'll just put these two in the center mm, let's see the other droids <laughs> right there's a csd4 yes i have just added now this there might be another CSD4, csd4 is there. probably moving around well we'll find it somewhere maybe if we do we'll you know just delete one mm -hmm. um i am going to call csd4 over yes sir um I was going to keep an eye on Nedra, but I realized Nedra doesn't understand a word that I say. So, if you could... Of course not, sir. ...be a friendly, helpful guide for Nedra with, you know, anything she needs as she's going about the ship. Uh, it might be a little bit quieter. Many people have left. Uh, we'll be undocking soon to continue our journey. You can tell her that if she asks. Um, of course, I sir. I'm going to pretty much just lock myself in the cabin in case there's any emergencies. Uh, don't let Nedra go onto the destroyer, though. Of course not, sir. All right. I leave this. That is for your... military personnel only. Yes. And I don't want her to try to hijack it in her sleep. Uh, I leave the rest of it to your immeasurable people skills. Your. Faith in me is gratifying, sir. Well, they're better than my skills. So, and then I close the door behind me and go sit in the co-pilot chair. Okay. Everybody else walks out to the airlock. I will go theater of the mind. 
Captain Travas nods to Zisha with a good approximation of actually being reasonably respectful and bows to Zwolrock. Just so that people know, Zwolrock has put their proper clothes back on. What are Zwolrock's proper clothes? The ones that they are wearing in their icon rather than the... Um, Extremely garish Hawaiian shirt. tourist <laughs> clothes that they got <laughs> off a station. <laughs> the the Hawaiian shirt robes. They are not walking into a relatively formal or something situation dressed like um like someone dumped an arshada all over them. <laughs> So the sort of teal um, one shoulder robe and the large torque and that's and the sandals and such. Yes. Rocky's vacations every time I dress a tourist. Yes. Um, okay, you still you get a bow and not the same sort of eyebrow lifting as if Narshada had had barfed all over you. Um, <laughs> Which sort of like if a unicorn does it, only more garish. And murmurs, my lord, at you. Do you wish to have nods and is just going to sort of eye everybody like they think that someone might be inappropriate towards their captain? Everyone is, seems to be being very respectful, despite the fact that you are dressed in a somewhat um, historic fashion. Do you wish to have this discussion here? I can send the others away. Or do you wish a conference room? Captain, my lord. Uh, either is fine, whatever you prefer. It's a bit of a walk to the ca- conference room. Let's do it here, then. Very well. He shoes everyone else away. They all wander off. Goodbye, ducklings. Goodbye. The ducklings all bow to Zorak before wandering off, except for the one who was still on the med bed, who has been zipped off already by droids. <clears throat> Captain Travas says, we are extremely grateful for the return of people who would undoubtedly have been captured at best. We can provide credits. We have credit sticks that are Republic funds. And of course we can provide Imperial credits. Would you be willing to perhaps bring more missing troops back if you can find them? I don't see any reason why not, unless they try to take over the ship. They would be most foolish to attempt to do so while Lord Zwolrock is aboard. I think so, too. If they tried such a thing, then of course they should be executed for treason. Okay. We have some coordinates. Well, coordinates, I say. A hyperspace lane that they should have been arriving through. An entire ship has gone missing, a transport. I what see. fee to investigate and recover? I name something reasonable. Okay. I don't know what reasonable is. <laughs> yeah, ex- indeed. Um, probably get a, that is extremely generous of you. We are, yeah. I'm not sure we can make all of that in, do you wish Republic credits or Imperial ones? Frankly, Captain, the places I hang out, they spend just the same. Excellent. In that case, offers a hand. I will have my communications officer send you the coordinates for the hyperlane that we expect them on. They are overdue by at least three days. We'll check it offers, out. Offers I'll a shake hand. His hand. Yeah, somewhat <laughs> stiffly. 
He is shaking hands with the Twi'lek. This is extremely weird. He does, in fact, glance at Zwolrock and just seems to be stealing himself to do this. Yeah. I mean, you know, the Empire is canonically kind of um, speciesist. Yeah, well, yeah. However, you have the favor of a Sith. Therefore, you treat the toilet correctly or else the Sith will force choke you. That's how these things work. Hmm. Do you require any supplies and... Yeah. Someone comes up and brings a basically a suitcase full of credit chips. Someone has run off and gotten you your fee for the original ducklings from what is probably like looted things from Republic sources. Fair enough. Um, double checking my disadvantages. Okay. Uh, I actually am not going to look inside the suitcase or whatever. Um, you know, if we could restock our larders and uh, refuel, that'd be great. But uh, I understand you, you've probably been out here a while, so. It's all right. We do have enough of a supply chain at the moment. All right. If I'll have some of the droids come and hook up to your fuel connections and what sort of mm, will military rations be appropriate for the larder restocking? That'll be fine. As long as it's something to eat. Of course. We will, of course, provide some rations for Lord Swolrock as well. Nod and bow. Uh, truly appreciate it. And, uh, oh, and um, if we find these uh, these troops of yours, well, eh, we'll make do. All right, well. Yes, uh, well, we have to get enough. Keep you posted. Thank you. We'll have some droids bringing you the uh, materials to this airlock within the next half hour, and the fuel connections will take a similar amount of time, or else I will have words with my engineers. I appreciate it. Uh, anything else, or, or shall we prepare to set off? If there's nothing else that you need of us, then we shall both go make the preparations. Sounds good to me. Thanks again, Captain. He salutes. He bows to Zorak. He waits for you two to leave his... Pre he, he walks off the... <clears throat> he steps back and waits for you two to go back on your ship. He is not turning his back on the Sith Lord. Zorak will on, follow his <laughs> ship back on. Uh -huh. Come on, my lord. Let's head back on board. <laughs> So I wasn't there for that, but my headcanon, based on what you said, is that the captain, because he doesn't turn his back on the Sith Lord, backs away slowly. I mean, you back away at a measured, unthreatening pace. That's just how you treat Sith. With great respect. Like they're a grenade where you're not sure if the pin has been pulled. Look, if you don't know if the pin has been pulled, that's a you problem. Well... I mean, sometimes you can tell when the pin has definitely been pulled, but sometimes you can't tell if the pin is pulled. Look, there are two states to Sith, you see. There's, there's explosive and there's could be explosive. Look, I know my explosives. And here's the thing. Is Jorok trying to kill you? No, the pin has not been pulled. You have 30 minutes to decide what you want to talk about or whatever in game time while droids show up and bring uh, supply large crates of military MREs, meals ready to, uh, well, not expire, apparently ready to eat. <laughs> if, if they're military... No, no, they would not send any of the... Uh -huh. Meals ready to expire, it would definitely not be true. They would have already expired. <laughs> no, no, you are getting the good stuff, and there's a crate that is labeled for 
um, appears to be labeled for Sith consumption. Presumably, it's like nutritionally balanced and stuff. It's a separate box. It's all, so, Rock, you get your own box. It's all caviar and sushi. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Rock is assuming that, well, yes, obviously they do have different dietary needs. Heavier on the meats and extremely spicy. Mm-hmm. Sushi, I'm already shuddering. <laughs> <laughs> That would be a You, you have a inspire. whole set of condiments in there? Yeah. <laughs> or oh. make someone else expire. There's a whole set of like special spices and condiments and, and sauces that you can apparently add to the things. So oh. Zisha will have new things to cook with. Zisha goes to the kitchen and uses this yes. chef. <laughs> <laughs> Muy caliente. But that's the wrong one. It it should be picante. Muy picante. More Caliente is is normal heat. If I recall anyway. my Spanish correctly, this the gif annoys you, me. Oh, no. You do recall your Spanish correctly. Picante is the spice. Spicy heat. But uh-huh. caliente is slang for extremely spicy. Okay. It didn't used to be when I grew up, but that was a long time ago. I appreciate that we just had language banter. And yet it wasn't about ancient Greek. That's true. <laughs> and it also wasn't about me trying to conlang Seth. <laughs> you trying to conlang someone else's conlanging of Seth. Yes. Look, passive voice and ergative are different things. Yes, yes, they are. And the person who invented that conling confused them. Oh, no. Things would be much easier if everyone spoke Java like civilized people. One word means everything. But it's not pronounceable. Not with that attitude. Unless you're a droid. Anyway. A droid with scent emitters just so it can speak Java fluently. Mm-hmm. Anyway. You get the codes. You're sent the, the heading for the hyperspace jump. You're asked to do your undock and wait a moment for them to get certain other ships out of the way so that you don't slam into somebody who's skulking around here. You can make a hyperspace jump. I mean, you can make a piling roll if you want to see if you get a crit failure or something. That'd be great. I do not want to see if I get a crit failure. <laughs> oh, all right. If you insist, we don't have to roll for it then. You're a good pilot. You're I taking am, your however. time. Mm-hmm. Do, do, do. Oh, area knowledge and navigation are both 14. Maybe three. And what are you so, doing with your nav? Besides nav- putting in the codes correctly. I'm thinking ahead to where we're going to come out and trying to figure out where we're going. You're going on a hyperspace route that has several tributaries to neutral and or hut space locations. Uh, Home sweet home. Yeah, pretty much. It looks like... If someone had left Alderaan on certain courses where they were trying not to be chased down the main track by Republic ships or something, then this, you know, they went out of their way and now they would be course correcting back to this particular location would be your assumption, tracing the the patterns and the hyperlanes and all that. So basically the thing that you're probably going to be doing is going down that hyperlane to a certain location, stopping at all the dropout points and trying to discover if there's a ship there or wreckage or something. Yeah, that's what I figured. Uh-huh. Okie dokie. Let's get going. Okay. Is there anything else that you want to be doing? Because it's going to be 
you know, a few days. I am going to be studying. Okay. And trying to keep Nedra quiet. Yeah, oh, that's and disassembling the MREs and turning them into ingredients. <laughs> There's a small pile the of the MREs getting larger. Yeah, there, there's the MREs. Um, they uh, pile of space can, you can disassemble a chunk of them. Mm -hmm. You've actually got, like, you know, several more crates than you would need. Oh, cooking made by one. So if you disassemble them all at once, it might be a problem. Let me just make a little roll here. You're rolling a lot of dice. I like rolling dice. They're fun. Technically, Nedra's rolling all these dice, which is um, worse. Yeah, Nedra rolled the dice. Made a success. She... Rotini will note that she toyed with the dummy computer, the decoy nav thing for a little bit, and tried to enter in some coordinates, and then sort of sat and looked at it for a while, and then wandered off to try to get into, onto the bridge again with sleepwalking. Did she press the button on the pad that said do not press? Hasn't yet. Dag nabbit. <laughs> One of these days. Apparently she's suggestible when she's asleep. Mm -hmm. One of these days. But not today. I mean, there, there are people who are afraid that do not press means that if you press it, it'll do something like, you know, evacuate the oxygen or something. They're concerned. Yes, they don't have curiosity. This myth. Uh -huh. But also, I want to see how well it's working. Pretty well. Yeah. Zisha will discover that the condiments that were sent along in the box for Zwolrock are heavy on spices. Like you unscrew a lid to give it a little sniff. And do, do Twi'lex even have nose hair? Because you might not after this, as I believe that it is at least Eos a canon that Sith do not have the gene for tasting spicy, or at least not in the same way. Okay. Um, I don't have any particular canons about head canons about we like tasting, um, mm. but given that they don't tend to have head hair, I will go out on them and say that they don't have nose hair. Whatever you have inside your nose that keeps gnats from getting into it in your native environment feels slightly crisped. Perhaps you should have done the extremely cautious uh, bit waft. where you sort of waft the thing to, yes, you waft to the uh, the oh, the steam towards you and delicately, carefully sniff, and even then you might still be a little bit nose fried. Well, these things happen. Uh, so either chemically around Rotini, I, I will poke my head from <laughs> around a bulkhead um, when that container is opened up and say, "Are you okay? It smells like someone's screaming." Just spicy. Okay. All right. That um, that explains it. But I'm um, I'm gonna close this door and crank up the air filter in here. <laughs> Solrock, something smells interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it smells like burning and death, and <laughs> and cries of and, no, and no, it didn't... voices crying out in anguish, and then suddenly silence as I turn up the AC. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it actually smells, you know, sort of piquant, or, or there, there's a interesting savory odor over there. Fun with aliens. I have a very sensitive After receptor. Finally attuned to the smell of various high explosives. And you don't want to know the detonation value of what I just smelled. Kind of want to borrow some to mix in with the shrapnel with this particular doohickey I'm working on. Chemical warfare. Anyway.
anyway, after a couple of days, you hit your first um, point where you drop out of hyperspace. And, you know, you look around, nothing here, go to hyperspace, another couple of days, look around, nothing here. There's just this asteroid field. Go into hyperspace. No, no, that, that, that asteroid field, that one's been there. You're not sure where the planet went off to, but the asteroid field is normal. Is it bigger now? Who knows? <laughs> hyperspace, couple days, drop out. Wait a minute. Somebody make a sensors roll for me. Uh, Electronics operation. Let's see what you've got here. I'm sure you've got one. Well, Zisha made it by four and I made it by eight. So we definitely sense something. Well, the electronics do. There appear to be three ships out there, according to the mass readings, two of which have working engines. They're all holding steady at a particular location, which I'm not going to mess with because it's not that relevant. That is off of the main hyperspace lane so that people are unlikely to slam into it while they're in hyperspace or get diverted by it or whatever happens when you go past something that's a ship holding still. They're on the shoulder. Yeah, they're on the shoulder. And Rotini detects that something is basically doing a routine scan periodically at the same time that you're doing the scan. One of the ships that is actually has a live engine. All right. So we've scanned their scan. The question is, did they scan our scan of their scan? Probably. They probably scanned your ship emerging from hyperspace. Great. That means we probably scanned their scan of our scan of their scan. Scanception. However, no one is hailing you. Well, if it was trouble, they usually hail us first. But I'm going to head to the engine compartment just in case. Out of my way, bulkhead. What do you think? Should we go in and take a closer look? You're the captain. Yeah. Seems reasonable. I don't mean to go the whole Deanna Troy thing, but are you getting any danger sense or anything like that? Hold on. Um, I'm trying to find the thing I need to roll for that. The GM has privately rolled some dice. The GM has. Zorok is not currently getting any danger sense. I do not sense anything okay uh let me know if you pick anything up i shall do so all right let's uh fly casual made it by five okay there is flying casually and there is getting you know, closer to the ships, get a camera visual on them. And what you see is one ship that looks... Oh, give me a area knowledge roll. Made by four. Yeah, that's pretty good. One ship looks hut style. One ship looks like... Well, you're not quite sure what the base of it is anymore, and it's been added on to, and it, it's a kind of large ship, though, but really beat up looking. <clears throat> and one ship in the middle looks like, well, you, you did see the styles of Imperial ships when you were hang, flying casual up to that uh, dreadnought, so that looks like maybe it's an Imperial transport, and... The Imperial Transport does not look like it's in very good condition. It also looks like the larger of the two ships that is around it might be something like a mobile chop shop. Also, one of them is hailing you. And why don't we take a break? It's okay. been about an hour. I could use some more tea. Go get some more tea. All right, I'm going to press a button. I have pushed the button as the fluffy orange cat goes round and round, round and round, round and round. 
That's why I'm having to move my icon, my cursor away from the GIF so it will stop moving and I will not be hypnotized. <laughs> Kitty, round and round. The body is round. Mm-hmm. Y'all got closer. <laughs> Y'all got closer to the couple of ships, and you're getting hailed. And that's where we last left off, so... Okay. I'll pick up. Greetings, this is the Bucephalus. It looks like one of you is incapacitated. Do you need assistance? No, Bucephalus, we're fine. Why don't you just mosey along? We weren't told to expect anyone else. We've got this under control. Which ship is sending um, this? The Hut ship. Who was, what's the name of our client from that very first mission where we were delivering uh, the stasis chamber that um, Did conspicuously not it... didn't have a Sith in it? Oh, let me scroll up and see if I've got to that. Not on that list. Come here. Where are my notes? Just notes, notes, notes. Let see. Uh, that is not the file. There's the file. Come here. Give me the file. That is not the file. That is not the file. That is definitely not the file. Some billiard, where are you? Graxar. Graxar the Hut. A known collector of antiquities. Um, okay, what are you fast talking? The scene setting, there are two ships that seem to be disassembling a third. The two, okay. the, the, the third doesn't, doesn't have active, doesn't have working engines. And the two that do have work, the, 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 the disabled ships, the ship looks like it might be Imperial. The non-disabled ships are are hut designs. Okay. There are, there are two in there disassembling the transport. Okay. Right. Thank you. Sorry. You've made a fast talk roll by one, and I did not catch what you were fast talking. That's because you uh, I haven't said fast. it yet. Whoosh! Yes. <laughs> this might be a bad idea, but I have impulsiveness. Uh-huh. And overconfidence, too. I'm confident that your impulsiveness will not cause any problems for us. In that case, I give you greetings from Mighty Graxar the Hut, and I will allow you to continue your business. Grax doesn't need any of this. We make a roll. Oh, no. Graxar shouldn't have any operations regarding this. There's nothing old on this ship. I simply bear greetings. What do you want? Well... I'm trying to decide how much I can... Zisha is trying to decide how much she can get away with. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let me get the phrasing in my head just right. Uh-huh. We have been given reason to believe that we might be interested in any living beings that were aboard that ship. <sighs> I don't know why. None of them looked archaeological to us. <sighs> Fine. If Gragsar wants to get his hands on one of these people, he can show up to the auction like everybody else. I am I not... See. I'm not doing anything that can be detected from outside of our ship. But... Probably not. Various <laughs> things that would be needed to be connected for me to, like, juice the engines or divert power to certain shield things. I'm just sort of like getting them lined up so that it's easier to do because I'm assuming that there is a high-powered fan that's spinning and something is about to toss excrement at it. Never know. It might be resolvable with words alone. Oh, Give me yes. an engineering roll, and whatever you make it by can be a bonus for doing stuff to cancel out penalties and whatnot. Zisha, I'm by not, three, your fast talk. I'm not actually connecting anything. 
Rotini, made by Ted. Well, okay, everything is ready to go. How much did the Imperials give us in terms of money? The moment, um, you probably have, call it about fifteen to 20,000 credits if you've actually counted it. Okay, and how many months will that keep the ship running? If that's all that you, if you spend it only on the ship, that's probably... I mean, like... Refueling, maintenance, food. It will keep you in, in good condition for probably, let's have, hand wave it horribly and say that it's about 10000 a month to, you know, do every little thing instead of skimping or doing stuff yourself or repurposing older, you know, things. So call it two months and you aren't having to scavenge older uh, equipment and repurpose it slightly to make it fit on the ship. And, you know, you're not buying the cheap food. You're just sort of buying, yes, we're going to order this. You know, no, we're not bothering to look for deals, that kind of thing. Okay. So, and keep you topped off on fuel and pay your uh, docking fees. You can run on less, but 10K a month is probably, this is comfortable. Okay. So you could probably run on 5K a month if you're scrounging, making scrounging rolls and looking for deals on food and eating the same, you know, variant of rice and beans five days in a row, et cetera. Okay. You've got at least 15 off of the Imperials, and that was when you got bored and stopped counting. You might have as many okay. as 20. They didn't give it to you in like little orderly things. You have a whole bunch of data credit stick, a uh, whole bunch of credit piles sticks. Of credit sticks, right? You have piles of credit sticks that they presumably think added up to what was would be a good sum, and they have promised you more if you can actually deliver more Imperials. Okay, and that's addition to in addition to what we have in the bank. Yes. So to speak. Yeah. Which is, you know, going paring down. I'm going to have to actually remind me to what those are. Yeah. <laughs> Shoveling money into the reactor. That's right. There. I have written down my notes. Okay. okay. Yep. Ready. I do not intend to interfere with your operation here, but you would have my personal gratitude if I could report back to Graxar and tell him that I had personally observed the people who were to be auctioned off to let him know whether he should divert his attention that way. Then you'll have to go to where they're going to be kept before the auction. Because they were gone when the... Uh, salvage ship here showed up and we were escorting it. I see. Do you happen to know where that would be? Probably Ord Mantel. That's where Wissy take has her set up, so, you know. Very well. How long have you been here? I don't see any hyperspace traces. Us? We've been here, oh, I don't know. Ten days or so. Depends on which, uh, standard you're using using hut standard it's about seven days using republic standard it's about ten Less than I, understand. Day day. I had hoped to catch them in transit or mantel is quite a leap from here but i'll leave you to your business thank you so much i will not forget this yeah, whatever. Tell Graxar that he probably isn't interested, but if he thinks he might be interested, you can show up and bid like anybody else unless he wants to try a sweet talk <clears throat> wissy. I shall communicate that as soon as I am able. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good day, and please patronize the Ord Mantel casinos when you get there. 
I always do. Glad to hear it. Uh, signed off with a casino and... ad. Yep. Yeah, of course. Space capitalism has gone. That worked for the far. huts. <laughs> I mean, this is huts. <laughs> huts are space capitalism. You can't even call them space feudalism because they they don't actually have much in the way of loyalty ish in theory even to the people under them. So you know. Anyway, they, I'll cut the communicator. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They did not give you their ship name, and they are not broadcasting a ship name. I hadn't intended to get one. Yeah. <laughs> we we won't forget you, unnamed NPC. <laughs> the unnamed Insert NPC here. does not care. The unnamed NPC can get a name when they feel like giving one to anybody else, which they don't right now. We were the NPC on name their whole is goldenpalace.com's Tarble Flex. <laughs> Tarble Flex. That's a name I made up. <laughs> of course. Hey, this is a setting where one of the characters is named Sleaze Bagano. Um, there is that. I shouldn't laugh. My character is named Rotini Parmesan, but still. <laughs> At least that's how you've decided to transliterate it into basic, galactic basic. Well, you know that there were people on the ship and they're being taken to Ord Bantel. Um, how long did it take us to get here? About six days. Fleet? Three about jumps, six about days. six days. Okay. Oh, okay. How long would it take us to get to... Then I have to update my notes. How long would Sorry? it take us to... Go to wherever we need to go to drop off Nedra. We do have that letter of reference. She just wants to hang it. Oh, well, that would be a jump in something of a different direction, I do believe. So oh, yeah. probably and at least another week. And as we're triaging this, people about to be auctioned off is a higher... Uh, it, it ranks higher on the problems we should solve scale than Nedra sleepwalking. But I am very much aware that Nedra's issues are things that we should probably resolve at some point. Me too. But, yeah. People being auctioned off is a higher priority if... Did we get the name of the transport? That was auction... The, oh, the Imperial Transport? Yeah. Um, that we're looking you got... for. You got a code number for it. Okay. If you made a good sensor sensor rolls. Give me another um, sensor roll to see if you could if you can get an idea of maybe there were numbers on some of the panels there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Between the two of you, you can piece together that this does look like it's the one you're looking for. There are some numbers painted on the hull that have not been pried off yet and put onto the chop shop ship. Okay. And this is the one we're... Sorry. This is the one we're looking for. Yep. Okay. It seems extremely likely. There's a bare well, chance that if the universe were against you, it would be one that looks almost identical. It still looks like an Imperial ship. Okay. Then it's time to head for Ord Mantell. Okay. Ord Mantell is going to be probably also about, oh, call it a week or so at the speed of plot. Okay. That's all right. You're chasing down somebody else who will have arrived and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give me half a brief moment just to see if there's anything that has a good image or something to show of the planet. Oh, hey, sure. Why not? Just take a little picture off of the Wikipedia. Ord Man that would be Ord Mantle. This is Mantell. <laughs> probably can't spell correctly. It has at least 15 moons. We we definitely can't see the Ord Mantle in this image. That is clearly the Ord Crust. Yes. And if we saw I do the not Ord, want to see the Ord Mantle. If we saw the Ord Core, we'd be in the distant future where someone created a Death Star to blow planets up. Do you know 
Ortobantel is notable as a trading post for, well, smugglers, tax evaders, black market people, etc., etc. Organized crime, hut crime, it's usually the same thing, but not always. Sometimes hut crime can be very disorganized. It's a moderately upscale hive of scum and villainy. So, I assume you are all going to go there and you are having Nedra sleepwalking. She keeps trying to get to the controls. Although instead of um, only trying to get to the ship controls, alas, the decoy only distracted her a few times. She's asking whoever comes to fetch her, where are we going? Where are we going? What are the coordinates? Even after I installed a version of Roller Coaster Tycoon that was more like hyperspace highway tycoon? Uh Uh-huh. It distracted her for one night, and then the next night she didn't seem to be distracted by it again. I am not downloading the DLC for that game, though. Reasonable. I assume you're telling her where you're going, or are you keeping her in the dark? Like a little mushroom. She's got access to the light switch. Yes. Yeah. She seems a bit sad that you have sent all the ducklings off the ship. She was apparently chatting with them occasionally when you weren't looking. I will, of course, tell her everything because I'm very truthful. However, she does not gain any knowledge from me. Uti... Uti... Ut- Utini? No, 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 no. Uh... Utini... And should, there should be a slight whiff of cinnamon. Utine. You know, we've made very good progress today. Utine. Okay. Now, um, I've graded your homework. And here you go. Here's your next assignment. Uh, we're going to focus on pronouncing the second syllable. She pats you on the head. <laughs> and then goes to look off to see if anyone else will tell her where they're go- where you all are going now. On one hand, I want to be insulted, but on the other hand, it's a head pat. <laughs> uh, anyone else have anything that they are going to be doing? Studying, cooking. Studying, cooking. Studying, cooking. Rolling dice. My brain has sort of um, okay fallen in this into case, little pieces. In this case, you are going to come out above the planet of Ord Mantell, of which you have a picture, and be, have the standard questions of who you are and where you want to go, which means you get to decide which landing zone on the planet that you desire. But, you know, we could leave it at that. We'll just sort of have you come out... And there in front of you, the camera pans to the planet, and you get to realize that you have one thing. You have the name of Wissy and Ord Mantell. And how about that's where we end it then? Also computer operation 19, so we can make this work. That's true. You probably do. But do you have research? Hmm. That's what computer operation 19 is. There's got to be a space search engine available. Yes, but oh, the man. SEO on it is just absolutely terrifying. Dagnabbit. It's page capitalism. three before you get an actual result. Mm-hmm. When you get to page two, it's just that gif of you have fallen far to come to me for help. Mm-hmm. Don't forget all the ads. So, does anyone have anything they'd like to plug? Well, my mom writes books. And is there a URL for that? I believe there is. Is it elizabeth-mccoy.com? I gather that is accurate. Hmm. And, and otherwise. Indeed. And speaking of... And speaking of Ellie, is there anything you want to plug? Not tonight. Okay. Plug? Uh, you sort of Cyloned out there, but 
I probably should plug in my phone. That uses USB-C. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I should probably also mention my website, aaronbsmith.com slash cogwheel. You can go there to listen to all of this series, including an entire Halloween arc using totally different characters that are I learned today from the future because I don't understand how the Star Wars timelines work. <laughs> Which, the time we spent recording that, as long as it was, the buffer we have is long enough that the first episode of that arc did not go up, well, will not have gone up um, yet. So, that's pretty cool. I like that. But we also have a lot of D&D games there, a few other things going on there, but you can subscribe to all of them. It's really cool. I think so, anyway. And if you want to binge listen and get the new stuff that buffer i was mentioning which currently we're recording this in january and i uploaded Uh an episode today that will go live on april 8th you want to get all that buffer well we have a patreon you can subscribe to patreon.com slash cogwheel gaming and we use those funds to help keep the lights on along with other illustrious patrons including Ellie, Shanshan, Walter, and Patron Emeritus Cindy. And this is Beth saying, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for playing Crash, Ellie, and EO. So good night to all of you. Have fun. And no, I don't think I have anything at the moment to say. It's just the usual standard stuff. Plus a certain amount of how many ads are on the first page of this search engine here? Can we try another one? What about Giska Giska Go? Good night, everyone. (laughs) Good night. Okay, seriously, I'm installing an ad blocker. Why wasn't there an ad blocker already installed?